I think there's basically two threads that kind of run through all of that and basically underpin what makes like really successful partnerships. Um, and the first is around aligning on what, what good looks like. What is your shared view of both your KPIs and what you kind of in hard numbers want to achieve, but also your vision and what you're trying to solve for your customers? Go Fabulous is a, is a very interesting company which process like a certain billions of payments uh, across 30 countries. It's like truly amazing. And you have very interesting experience and partnerships. So that's why I think very interesting to ask you, uh, what is it, can you explain what is your company is doing and uh, what is your partnership team looks like? Yeah, sure. So um, Go Cardless is a recurring payments specialist company. Um, so we were basically founded with the belief that we could take the pain out of getting paid for customers of all sizes around the world. Um, and the, the current uh, payment methods available to businesses taking recurring payments in particular um, aren't good enough. Um, and we actually believe that the existing systems are really broken for the future of the economy, which is kind of subscription and recurring billing payments. So what GoCardless does is provide bank debit payments for businesses who take recurring payments. Um, so bank debit isn't a term that everyone will be familiar with. Um, so in brief, it's uh, a term for bank to bank payments, which means moving money between people without using a credit or debit card network. Um, most people in the UK, for example, will be familiar with direct debit as a form of bank debit. But there are lots of similar schemes around the world. But traditionally, they haven't really uh, spoken to each other. So you could be taking payments by a bank debit method in one country, um, but you could also be operating in another country and you wouldn't be able to have those systems talk to each other. Um, and that puts a lot of barriers in the way of businesses. They've also been traditionally quite hard to access for smaller companies. So Go Cardless is basically here to provide access to those systems, but importantly, to also improve them. Um, so that both small and large businesses can take recurring payments um, in a much more suitable way. Right, fantastic. And then uh, when, when it comes to partnerships, you have like uh, 150 companies you integrate with, and then you probably have much more, many more partners on the distribution side. Can you explain how, how it works and how they think uh, uh, about your partners? We're really lucky um, to have a really fantastic and, and fast growing ecosystem of partners. Um, the vast majority are SaaS businesses who integrate Go Cardless so that their users can collect payments. So our partners are typically integration partners. Um, our kind of primary verticals at the moment, at least, are invoicing and accounting. Um, so platforms like Xero, like QuickBooks, like Invoiced and Sage. Uh, membership platforms, so people like TeamUp and Glowfox, um, who provide services for membership, particularly health and fitness businesses. Uh, billing platforms uh, like Zuora, Recurly, um, and also CRM, so, so the likes of Salesforce. Um, but we also have a huge um, range of really vertical specific or use case specific partners um, who've built uh, platforms and systems for their users who might have really specific needs. Um, so, for example, uh, a kind of personal favorite who's, who've been with us for a little while now is an uh, online scout manager. So online scout manager have built a platform for scout groups to manage all the admin um, around having a scout group, including collecting payments. And they've integrated us so that their customers can use us. Um, so I think what all of our partners really have in common is that they've got a user base who want to collect payments in a seamless way. And an integration with GoCardless enables them to offer that service. Right. Uh, okay. Fantastic. Uh, and then, then, when it comes to like your your favorite example of partnerships, if you walk us through details, uh, how do you find partners? How do you like uh, integrate with them? Uh, and if you can do that on an example of one company, would be would be brilliant. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, in terms of like the life cycle of a partner with Go Cardless, um, we, we start by working out whether there's a shared value in us working together. Um, so when we're going out and um, asking partners if, if they'd like to come and work with us, we're doing that in a relatively targeted way. So we're looking for platforms who um, are interested in solving the same problems that we're interested in solving. So typically that would be um, things like cash flow, so improving cash, cash flow for their users. 
or reducing overheads for larger businesses, so particularly operating costs. Um, so we would reach out to those kind of companies and say, look, we have a shared vision um, and we have a shared goal um, that we're trying to achieve for our users. Um, we'd like to work together. We're also really lucky to benefit from a lot of people who see what we're up to um, and come to us. And they typically come to us because their customers are asking for an integration with GoCardless. Um, so we'll have a conversation at that stage around um, what we're both trying to achieve. And if there's a mutual fit um, and we're both trying to solve the same problems, then we'll scope an integration. Um, and here we're basically scoping the technical aspects of the partnership um, and working out where exactly the nuts and bolts will fit together so that um, we can offer a really seamless service for our shared users. Right. Um, and, then, and then we kind of get into to launch and, and go to market um, with the partners that really want to be kind of shouting about the integration that we've built together. Um, in terms of like a partner that kind of sums up that in a, in a nutshell, um, I mean, my favorite partner and the one we kind of talk about a lot internally is Xero. Um, so Xero are a leading accounting platform. I know you've um, spoken to some of their partnerships team. Um, and that partnership is centered on improving cash flow for small business users. Um, we've partnered with them for a number of years, but in the last two, we've really kind of deepened and expanded the relationship. And we've essentially relaunched it, to be honest, to um, our shared customers and also to the, the kind of broader market. Um, and there we've kind of gone through exactly the same process, but on a foundation of um, existing users and some success. Um, and it's been it's been absolutely fantastic to hear from those customers on the benefits of the integration, but also the value that we're bringing to to zero and to go cardless and how that really compounds over time um, has been has been a fantastic example of that life cycle. When you, when you when you launch your integration with partners, right? How do you like go about uh, making sure that this partnership is actually successful, is growing, and is it, it, it is it is expanding? What is your customer success, like partner success uh, practice on? Yeah, so, um, I mean, we've, we've got a kind of internal toolkit, um, for our partner team, which basically acts as like an ever evolving guide for partnership managers to utilize across a partnership lifecycle. So that goes from developing that new relationship to building a great integration and then kind of continued growth. Um, and the idea is that we're not reinventing the wheel with every partner, um, but we're also feeding back in the learnings that we have from every new partner that we work with, um, to improve the way we do things. Um, but I think there's basically two threads that kind of run through all of that and basically underpin what makes like really successful partnerships. Um, and the first is around aligning on what, what good looks like. What is your shared view of both your KPIs and what you kind of in hard numbers want to achieve, but also your vision and what you're trying to solve for your customers? Um, you do this at different levels with different partners. So partners where both sides are really, really invested might have, um, you know, a lot of conversation and spend a lot of time investing in getting that foundation right. Whereas some people, it might be slightly more transactional, but there needs to be some kind of shared alignment of goals. And then once you've agreed where you want to go, um, you need a plan for how you're going to get there. And that's really the, the second thread, which is around how do you... Um, make sure that you've got a plan that aligns to those goals and that it's really, really clear who is going to be doing what within the relationship. Um, and I think that's one of the things that um, we spend a lot of time on uh, getting right, both at the principal level and like how we're going to kind of divvy up the major functional areas or the major aspects of, you know, essentially a customer's life cycle with us. Um, but also at a, the kind of nitty gritty level, like, who exactly is going to kind of pull which lever to make things work. And I think if you get those two threads right throughout the whole partner life cycle, um, you generally see some some pretty good things. So partnership and business development are functions that are sometimes go hand in hand, sometimes they are competing. Uh, how, how do you think about partnership and versus business development? Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good question. Um, we actually try not to separate the two too much. Um, so, so when you think about what the key benefits are of, of partnerships, um, certainly in the go cardless context, um, I think we're thinking about three big things. Um, so the first and probably the most important is customer value. So partnering up should mean that we bring more value to our users than we could alone in, in both, both parties. Um, in our case, adding payments to existing software opens up additional opportunities to add value because we can do things like aut automatically reconcile payments into your accounting software, for example. 
So that additional value um, enables you to sell. Um, so it helps with business development and it will help us generate revenue. But it also has a strategic value to the company because we're adding uh, essentially product functionality without having to go out and do that work ourselves and become an accounting platform. Um, secondly, our partners help us drive growth really efficiently. Um, it's pretty obvious that if we work with someone like Zero, who has hundreds of thousands of users uh, worldwide, we can piggyback onto those networks. Likewise, they can, they can access some of our customer base. So by working with those people, we get access to their markets, but we also really supercharge how quickly we can understand the space um, and iterate what we do to, to support those customers. So that, again, is business development. It helps us win revenue quicker, um, but it's also um, it also has a lot of benefits beyond the business development because it helps us get into new markets, for example. Um, and I think that really leads to like the third thing, which is about partnerships being a way to get at the forefront of new developments. Um, and I think like international expansion is a really tangible example of that. Um, we've used our partners to get into, into new markets. You know, we're working really closely with Zawara in the US, with Zero in Australia, with local partners in, in kind of mainland Europe. And those partners have expertise and customers in those countries. And basically, if you think about the benefits that you're getting there, it is on the one hand, just access to those customers and business development. But on the other hand, it's actually really helping the company to grow. So I think we, we try not to think about them in, in too, too different a light. I think the, the one kind of place where you do see a big difference is that the value of partnerships tends to come in over a longer period of time and therefore can be slightly harder to measure.